Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to make a scrappy, happy table runner. Now, every time I make a quilt, I almost always end up with some scraps. It's just sort of the nature of quilting that no matter how hard I try not to waste anything, I can't get every last bit into the quilt. So I end up with these nice pieces from all these different projects that don't necessarily coordinate. And then I wonder, what could I do with all of these? So I was playing around with some numbers to see what would be good with some scraps. And here's a block that I would like to make. It has a small pinwheel, kind of a bigger pinwheel. And so here is the practice block that I made of, and that's what the table runner is gonna be based on. Now, the reason this works well for scraps is because all of the pieces come from either two and a half inch squares or two and a half inch little rectangles. And that's gonna work out really well because so many of my projects are made with pre-cuts. So if you've got jelly roll strips, very easy to get the squares or the rectangles. If you've got 10 inch squares, that's four two and a half inch strips. Again, very easy to get the pieces you need. Maybe you have charm squares left over. I have a lot of charm squares. If you cut that in half, you've got two two and a half inch strips. Now, of course, if you have a lot of yardage for your scraps, you can cut it into the sizes you need very easily. Now, I did write a pattern for this and it's free. It's just the link, the first link right below the video that says free pattern. And that will tell you exactly what size pieces you need and which pre-cuts you can cut up into all those pieces. But I really prefer to make this one block at a time. So you can see some different bright ones I made here. And I didn't worry too much about getting all the fabrics to match. The one thing you might keep in mind is you wanna have two darker prints here and a medium print here and that will give your blocks just a little bit of form. So I've pulled off some scraps for a block here. I've got a charm square and I've got some jelly roll scraps. The first thing I'm going to cut is the charm square. I'm going to cut it into four squares that are two and a half inches each. Now out of these strips, these jelly roll scraps here, all we need to get is four pieces of each one that's four and a half by two and a half. Now the two and a half is already cut, so I just have to layer it up. I've got all four layers there and cut it into a four and a half inch segment. Now you can cut your pieces one at a time if you like. I'm comfortable cutting four layers, but you should cut the amount that you're comfortable with. And from this print, we need the exact same pieces. We just need four that are four and a half inches each. Now, the only other thing I'm going to need is some background. And I always have a lot of background left over because I use background in almost every quilt I make. And I think that the runner will look best if I use the same background for every block. So I'm gonna use this nice solid white. All we need from the background is more of this size piece here. We need eight squares at two and a half inches. This is all we need for one block. Now the first thing we need to do is mark the back of all of the two and a half inch squares, the background and the dark ones here. So on these light ones, I'm gonna make a line, a diagonal line from corner to corner, and I'm gonna use a light pencil mark. Now on these dark ones, my pencil won't show. So what I'm gonna do is I have a chalk pencil. This is a white chalk pencil. And I'm gonna mark all of these like that. Now we're heading to the sewing machine with all of our pieces. First step is to take one of these squares and put it right on top of one of the rectangles with the line going like this. And we're gonna stitch along the line or slightly to this side of the line. And the reason we might move over just a hair is because we're going to fold it and the fold itself takes a little bit of space. So what we want is when we fold this over, 
we want all those lines there, all the outside edges, to meet up exactly. So that's how you can tell if you've done it perfectly, is if you fold it along there, all the raw edges meet. So I stitched all four of those units. Those are all exactly the same. Now we'll start with these. So these are actually going to be a flying geese unit. That means we're going to be stitching two squares on here and we're going to fold them back. But the only way to do it successfully is to stitch on one on every corner, iron it and trim it, then we'll come back and add this second one. So this is the same procedure. We're stitching on the line or a little bit over toward the corner there so we can fold it. Again, it's always a good idea to do one, open it up, and see if everything is all lined up nicely. Now we want to iron these with a fold in it like that. And then we want to trim off these back two layers so we don't have so much bulk. So once we trim it, we're still going to have the same size rectangle that we started with. Same thing with these guys. Open it up. Give it some nice steam. Trim off the back two layers. Now we're back at the machine just with these blocks here and we're going to add that second square in the opposite corner. So I'm going to line everything up, stitch right along that line, and this is what it's going to look like. We'll just fold that over, give it a nice steam press, and trim off this second extra bit of fabric. And now we've got more rectangles. Now all I have to do is put these two halves together. So this is how they go together with this little triangle up against that bigger rectangle there. And they're the exact same size. So all we have to do is stitch a quarter careful inch along here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all of these pieces. They all face exactly the same way. Now I'm not going to take these over and iron them. I'm just going to finger press them and I'm going to press the seam away from this background, so it's going to go that direction. So I'm just opening it up a little and then running my fingernail along it. So there's just four of these seams, so it just takes a minute. And now we're ready to put the block together. So that's going to go there. The next one gets spun, and then this one gets spun again. And then this one gets spun again, so we end up with that nice uh, pinwheel in the center. So to sew the block together, just put these pieces right side together, and we're going to slide this right over, match everything up. And then slide the second pair over, match it up, and the nice thing is, this seam allowance is going that way and the seam allowance on the other side is going the opposite direction. So in the corner here where these all come together, the seam allowances are nesting so it's very flat and very easy, very easy to get everything lined up and you don't have a lot of excess bulk there right in the center of your block which is really nice. Now we're going to again just finger press, so we're going to go away from that background. So this one is going to go this way, and the bottom half is going to go in the opposite direction. So every time we do our seams in different directions, it makes it easy to get them to match. So right here, you see the seams are going 
opposite ways and that makes it really easy to feel if they're matched and there's less bulk because of it. So it's a very easy block to make. Center matches perfectly. Now we can take it over to the ironing board and the block is all done. Now all five blocks are done and now I need to figure out how I'm going to get these into a runner. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small border from the background around each block and I'm going to cut it one and a quarter inches. These shorter two pieces are eight and a half inches long and that's how big my block is right now. And then I've got some longer pieces we'll put on afterwards. And they're cut 10 inches. Now you don't have to remember all those numbers because it will all be in the free pattern. And I'm going to press this toward the border because there's so many seam allowances in here that it really wants to lay that way. Now that those two borders are on, this one will fit exact. It's 10 inches long. Each of the scrap blocks now has a border around it. And to put them together, I'm going to put something between them. So I took a jelly roll strip, cut it 10 inches long, and then cut it in half. And so this is going to go just between these blocks. I'm going to finger press all of these seams toward that colorful border. Now to finish up the runner, I'm going to add a border all around that is the width of a jelly roll strip. And I certainly could take all of my jelly roll strips and make a pieced border of all different fabrics all the way around. That would look nice. But I've got a quarter yard of this fabric, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it into jelly roll um, sized strips, which are two and a half inches. I stitched the short borders onto each side, and now I'm just going to smooth this out flat and I've got these pieces all stitched into one long piece here. Got the two ends lined up and to make sure that I get the border sewn on nice and flat I'm just going to smooth it right down the middle of the runner here and then I'm going to cut it to this length. An easy way to cut it to this length is just to fold it so the fold is even with the edge there Put your scissors in, and now we have a nice straight cut there. And now I know these pieces are the correct length of the runner. And that way when I stitch them on, I'm going to pin it a couple times, it won't get stretched and those borders won't be ripply. Now that the top is all done, we're ready to get a backing. So I just have a yard of fabric here and I trimmed each edge of it nice and straight and now I'm going to split it along the fold here because the shape it is right now it won't fit for a back on the runner. It's not long enough. So I'm just going to split it like that and now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to seam it right down the middle here. I stitched the seam right down the middle and I pressed it open. I almost always press my backing seams open so there's not extra bulk there. Now I'm going to put the batting on top of that. And this is a scrap of batting. I get a lot of scraps from my quilting. You may have a piece left over from a quilt you made. And I'm going to put it on here a little bit crooked. I'm not going to put it on parallel to the edge. I'm going to put it on at a little bit of an angle. And I'm going to do the same thing with the runner top. So the runner top is going to be 
just at a little bit of an angle compared to my backing. And that is because I'm going to quilt this on my regular machine. I can't drop the feed dog. I'm not going to put it onto the quilting machine. And if you put it at a little bit of an angle, your stitching will then be not on the straight grain on your backing and it'll be a lot easier to quilt. I'm just going to trim off some of this excess all the way around the quilt or around the runner because it'll be easier to work with. And then I'm going to pin my quilt sandwich all around the edges. Once you have it pinned all the way around the edges, you're going to want to put some pins in the middle of the runner so nothing moves. So I'm going to do the middle of each block. And then I think I'll just do a couple right in this border here. And that should be enough to keep it from moving while I'm doing the quilting. Now I'm going to stitch very close to the edge, an eighth or a quarter inch away from the edge here. And I'm using a long stitch length. I'm just basting all around the edge just to keep everything together while we quilt it and to keep all the edges together so we can put the binding on later. Now I'm ready to start the quilting. So I'm going to mainly go in the ditch. I'm just going to go around some of the patchwork here and I'm going to do a little bit of quilting first and I can always come back and add more if I like. So I think I'm going to put white or very light blue thread on the top and definitely a blue or an aqua on the bottom. I went ahead and threaded the top and the bottom with this very pale aqua blue thread because it's not going to show much no matter where I use it. Now quilting in the ditch, that's when you stitch right along your seam line. And really quilting near the ditch is okay, it doesn't have to be in. But what you want to do ideally is have your needle come down right along the edge. So I'm actually stitching on the white part. Let me make my stitch length a little bit smaller there. So I'm going to kind of hold these open, open these fabrics so the seam is very flat and then just stitch a little bit and try to get it right in the ditch. Really near the ditch is good enough because it's not going to show when you're all done. And I'm going to go all the way around the runner like this. Now if you want you can stick some extra pins in so you feel like you have something secure to stitch toward. Because we put our backing on slightly crooked, we are not going to have the problem of the bottom feeding in faster than the top. That is a real problem when you can't drop your feed dog and you don't have a walking foot and you're just stitching this on your regular machine. The bottom fabric wants to feed in faster. So you can see right here, I am right in the ditch. But as I follow this farther back, I'm not really in the ditch right here. I am near it. Now, if that's going to bother you, you can take that stitching out and redo it. It's probably not going to bother me when I get the whole runner done. So I'm probably going to leave that there and I'll get better as I go around. I find that every project I do, I get a little more skilled as the project goes on. I went ahead and finished up all the rest of the quilting. So after I went around here, all I added was both sides of the blue, and then I went around these blocks here and around that pointy part. So you can see it a little bit more on the back side. So it's not too much quilting, but this is enough so that if you wash your runner, it's going to stay together nicely. Of course, if you want to add more free motion quilting or add more parallel lines, you can do that very easily. I'm happy with how it turned out, even with all these different styles of prints. There's wild prints, there's calm prints, there's all different colors, but because we've got each block with this light background border and then separated with these little borders, it still looks really, really nice and a lot calmer than I thought it might. To finish off the edges, I went ahead and used 
binding, just like I would on a quilt. And the binding fabric I used is the same as what I used for these little teeny borders. And I think that helped coordinate everything and keep it nice looking. Now, on the back here, remember we seamed the back, but you really can't see that seam very much. And the seam is at a little bit of an angle because we put our top on the back and batting at an angle, making it really easy to quilt. And none of it wanted to travel very much while I was quilting it. Now I had some, I had a uh, nice jelly roll here. And I wanted to show you what it looks like if you make some blocks, not from scraps. We don't all have scraps we want to make into a runner. So this was a, I think it's a Christmassy jelly roll. And I just took some of the prints and made these blocks. And you can see how nice they look when they're coordinated. The blocks are quite easy to make. So you could take a jelly roll and make a whole quilt's worth of these blocks. They're really fun. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the scrappy table runner. And I hope that gives you a lot of good ideas to use up some of your scraps. And remember, this is a free pattern and it'll have a lot of information in there on how to use scraps from 10 inch layer cake squares, leftover charm screws. So you don't have to use exactly what I used in mine. It will give you all those numbers. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. You may have seen the video where we made this pattern called Twist and Shout. And I used a lot of bright K facet prints along with some grunge. And this is actually a nice big quilt. It's a disappearing four patch pattern, which means you take four squares, stitch them together, slice them up, twist them around, and it makes a very interesting overall pattern. Now it's very easy to enter the giveaway. All you have to do is click the link right below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. And remember, we can send the winning quilt here to any address anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.